Welcome back, my friends. How y'all doing this evening? Hopefully you're doing well. If not, maybe I can offer you a bit of encouragement to say, hey, if we can just start each day with a bit of gratitude, just thankfulness for being alive and build on that, that really is the key. And that's exactly how I'm going about my day into the evening here. And you know what? We've got some beautiful weather and I've been blessed to have this garden to head out to this evening. And I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this night by having myself a bit of a feast, taking some ingredients from the garden and preparing a dish, an off-grid style dish using my rocket stove. So I'll be sharing with y'all what I'm gonna be making, which is an original dish. And the ingredient, the main ingredient that I'm gonna be putting into the dish is one you may not have known is actually edible. Check it out. Here we are next to this patch of goji berries growing over here, also known as wolfberry, or known botanically as Lycium barbarum. And we're gonna be harvesting some of these gojis tonight for our dish, but it's not just the goji berries we're gonna be harvesting. We're gonna be harvesting the leaves of the plant. That's right. Many folks may not be aware of this, but many of the different species of the goji berry plant have edible leaves. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure to identify the plant that you have growing and cross-reference that before you do do any cooking with this. But the leaves have a long tradition of uses, both as an edible, being used in teas and soup bases, as well as a medicinal. And this is great news, because what an abundant plant we have here. Throughout the spring and summer months, you can be harvesting these berries and the leaves and preparing some wonderful dishes. And once you get your plants established, they just keep on producing and producing. You can see here, mid-September, and we've got more green berries coming on. This is probably the third or fourth flush that we've had of fruit on these plants and just an endless supply of leaves as well. Now, if you're looking for more information about growing goji berries, check out the playlist that I dropped down below this video in the description box. I've made several videos going over with you everything you need to know to grow this plant successfully. Everything from its cold hardiness to the best location to put it in your garden, pruning tips, so check that out. So as with many of the other edible leaves that we harvest from our garden, it's gonna be the newest growth and the tips of the plant that have the least bitterness and the best flavor. So with the Lycium barbarum, if you've got a fresh green tip like this, you can actually harvest the whole thing and throw it in your dish. And check it out, we've got some new beautiful flowers forming on this plant as well. Now, although it is quite rare to find the goji berry leaves available, at your local market, your best chance is gonna be at an Asian market where you'll typically find basically about a foot long cutting bunched up into a bunch of greens. You're gonna strip those greens off of those plants. But we can do the same thing right here in the garden, just strip off the leaves. They're gonna grow back from all the little nodes here in each crook where this leaf has formed. So we're just gonna do that now. You see how easy they pull off. So if you are using this technique, I do suggest that you leave the tips complete so the photosynthesis can continue and the plant will remain healthy. Let's have a little snack here. With some species or depending on the time of year when you're harvesting you may need to be careful because there's thorn like little side branching occurring on these plants later on they grow out but earlier in their growth cycle they're really sharp and pointy by the way i'm not sure if i mentioned this already but what i'm making is a chicken soup with the goji berry leaves. And we're also gonna be including in there some of the goji berries. And we're just gonna harvest these just as we did the leaves. We're just gonna swipe along the branch and pull all the berries off. It's actually quite surprising that the birds don't raid these bushes more than they do. But hey, when you have an abundance of food crops, there's plenty enough to share with some of the wildlife. So the goji berry is a superfood. Most folks are aware of that. You can readily find these now at most health food stores, supermarkets, online. Uh, they're a powerhouse of nutrients. They contain at least 20 amino acids, along with many trace minerals. They're loaded with vitamins, polyphenols, polysaccharides. 
and there is a host of associated health benefits to including the goji in your diet. So the good news is if you're not yet growing this plant or you're unable to, you can still purchase the berries online and continue making this recipe without the leaves. So there we are, quick little harvest. We're just gonna rinse these off real quick. The birds do frequent the goji berry shrubs, so I highly recommend that you do rinse them off before using them. All right, so a quick lineup of the few ingredients that go into this dish, yet it's still gonna be remarkably tasty. Starting off, we've got some chopped chicken breast here. Now, I'm gonna be using this hot and sour soup packet as my soup base, but you could use chicken broth, whatever you have really to use as a base will work fine. Of course, we've got the goji berry leaves and goji berries, and I've got a couple eggs here. Other than that, we're just gonna be cooking with our water and making this delicious soup. And I'm gonna be cooking this dish tonight using my rocket stove. You may recall seeing me cook with this in previous videos. This is a wonderfully easy way to cook outside using things as common as wood chips, branches, you can even put charcoal in here. And the great thing about it is once we get that fire going, it's completely smokeless and you get a lot of energy out of just a little bit of fuel. Now one thing I really like about this particular model of rocket stove is it has the dual doors here. This main chamber is for feeding your fuel into, but this bottom door, when you open it or close it, it allows for more or less airflow to come through so you can really control the heat, dial it in, either heat it up with the door wide open, or if you want to cool it down a bit, close it up. And this rocket stove is by Stove Tech. I don't believe they're around anymore. I think they actually sold to a different name brand. I'm pretty sure that's the case as some of the different models that I see online look exactly the same. So it's either a knockoff or it's the same exact model under a different name. Anyway, let me show you how I get things started here. I'm just gonna start it off as I would a campfire with a little bit of paper at the bottom. And here's my fuel here. Just some random chunks of wood, branches, twigs. We're gonna lay a few of these here up top. Get things going. See in the beginning we got some smoke. Now you can see that we got a good flame going. There's absolutely no smoke. All right, so we're gonna get our pan on here, start heating things up and it heats up quick. So the first thing we're gonna do is add in some water. We'll let that begin to heat up. And while we're waiting for that, we're just gonna throw our contents of the hot and sour soup mix into the bowl and add some water. It's recommended to do this if you are using the hot and sour soup mix. If you add it directly into hot water, it tends to clump together. And we'll give that a quick stir. And now, literally in about a minute, this water is approaching boiling. We're gonna go ahead and add in our chicken here. And I'm just gonna collect a few more pieces of wood here. We're gonna need it throughout the cooking process. And we're just gonna let this cook for about five minutes before we add in the rest of our ingredients. All right, so we're ready now to go ahead and add in the soup base mix. And now we're ready to add in the goji leaves and the goji berries.
And once again, we'll give that a stir. Now while that continues cooking, I think it's a good idea if I get out over here at this Hugo Culture raised bed and harvest some of these lemon cucumbers. Most of these are past their prime. We had an abundance. That one's still pretty good. We had an abundance of these growing all throughout the garden. So the majority of these here, I'm going to be harvesting for seed stock. And I want to get these before the wildlife does. It's getting close to that time where we do a reset in this bed. Get some greens, amongst some other things, planted in this bed for the winter season. If you're looking for a prolific grower in the cucumber family, look no further than the lemon cucumber. They're wonderful to eat out of hand, run through a juicer. Slice them up, put them atop a salad. They grow very easily. Not a bad little harvest for just a couple minutes. Oh, it's smelling really good. Another cool thing about the setup is once your wood burns down, it becomes like charcoal in the rocket stove, so it continues to cook. You don't have to keep adding fresh wood for the duration of the entire cooking process. So we're getting really close here. Just one final ingredient to add, and that is the two eggs. And we want to do that right at the end of the cooking process. So I'm going to give this another two or three minutes. We'll go ahead and add those eggs in, and then we'll have our supper. What a great way to spend an evening though, huh? Out here in the backyard food forest next to the pond, cooking with natural cooking process, the rocket stove. Highly recommend this either for backyard cooking, just to have a backup way to cook food if you need to, you lose power, or for camping, this would also be wonderful. So in the last few minutes of cooking, you can see how the fire has died down. We got some nice coals inside there. The two eggs into the pot. So we'll give that a quick stir. We don't want to over stir the eggs. We want to create a nice broken up egg throughout the soup. Eggs also going to thicken up the base in that soup mix. I'm going to give it a little try here. Tastes delicious. This soup is ready to go. Let's go ahead now and serve ourselves up some of this delicious goji berry chicken soup, hot and sour style. Well, that's going to do it for now, my friends. Sure do appreciate you being here. If you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, be sure to smash that thumb button for us. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day. And I'm always giving you updates on all the different things growing on around here. So I'm going to enjoy my soup and welcome in nightfall. So with that, I'll be talking to you again real soon. Take care. One last thing I just want to confirm. This dish turned out absolutely delicious. Everything cooked perfectly. The leaves perfectly tender, no bitterness.